You might know Jesus and Krishna as two separate figures in two separate religions, but they actually have a lot in common, so much so that it's a little sus. I love it when ignorant laymen hear something, do a 10 minute Google search and decide to share it on the internet like they've upgraded everyone's IQ. The only commonalities between the two are basic, vague and surface level. They're not similar at all. Number one, their birth. So the Christian story goes that when Christ was born, there was a king, King Herod. He wanted all the kids dead because he heard that the king of the Jews is going to be born soon. And on the Hindu side, around the time Krishna was conceived, his uncle was a ruler of the land and he got a prophecy saying that this child is going to kill him. Did you actually read any of the stories or did you just stumble upon a random blog post on the internet and regurgitate what it said? Because the fictional tale of Krishna and the historical events of Jesus' birth are not similar at all. In the tale of Krishna, King Kamsa receives an omen that the eighth child of his sister Devaki is going to kill him, so he begins to contemplate the murder of his sister. Vasuveda, the husband of Devaki, in order to protect his wife, sends a proposal to Kamsa to spare his wife, and in return, he is going to deliver every child born to Kamsa. Kamsa agrees to this at first, but is later visited by a sage named Narada, who informs him how he's going to be killed. Kamsa, in fear for his life that one of the children born to his sister might be the god Vishnu, since Vishnu killed Kamsa in his previous life when he was a demon, Kamsa imprisons his sister and her husband and kills their children one by one, and Krishna is later born in this prison cell. In the story of Jesus, wise men from the east arrive in Jerusalem seeking the king of the Jews. King Herod, hearing of this, becomes troubled as he fears this new king's potential threat to his rule. He asks the wise men to find the child and report back to him. However, the wise men are warned in a dream not to return to Herod, and they return home by another route. Herod, enraged by this, orders the massacre of all male children in Bethlehem under two years of age. If you were to actually read both these accounts, you'd know they are nothing alike. By the way, the story of Krishna also differs depending what source you read from. Very similar representation. That looks like a 19th century painting and the depiction of a mother holding a child is common in many religions and cultures. Number two. They both have a heavenly father. No, Krishna is one of the ten incarnate forms of the deity Vishnu. He does not have a heavenly father. Krishna is literally a human manifestation of Vishnu. Krishna is believed to be the reincarnation of the Hindu deity Vishnu. And Jesus is the son of the Christian God, but he's also God himself at the same time. Is this a joke? I mean, you're comparing two things that are completely different, and your blatant ignorance of the Trinity is pitiful. And they've both promised a second coming to bring justice in the world. With Jesus, there's a second coming. And with Krishna, Vishnu will reincarnate again. Another surface level uninformed comparison. The second coming of Jesus refers to his return at the end of times as a triumphant figure to bring final justice and establish God's kingdom. There is no promise of a second coming of Krishna anywhere in the Hindu text. What she's referring to is another of the many incarnations of Vishnu as a new avatar. So if we're talking about the 10 principal avatars of Vishnu, this would be the 11th coming of Vishnu. But as you can see, she is being intentionally dishonest here to try and force these so-called similarities. The incarnation of Vishnu is not a single event like the second coming of Jesus, it's a cyclical appearance. Whenever cosmic order is disrupted, Vishnu reincarnates as an avatar to restore justice and protect Dharma. I'm running out of time, but they also both predicted their own death and ascended to heaven. This is not true. Nowhere in the Hindu text does Krishna predict his own death, nor does he ascend into heaven like Jesus did. After being shot with an arrow, Krishna just kind of returns to his divine form. It doesn't specify how. And if you study the Vedic text properly, you'd know that Krishna doesn't really die because he's not considered a mortal human being. His earthly mission was complete, so he returned back to his divine cosmic form by his own desire. Disclaimer, I'm not making any claims on which one is more correct or valid. Your faith is your faith. Really? After spouting all that nonsense, you're going to attempt to wrap everything up with a nice little impartial bow. I'm not making any claims. Well, I am. Hinduism is false. Christianity is the only truth. 